okay my definition of ill mental health is when for example for me my experience of it has been where you just have a major sort of breakdown and when I say breakdown I mean like um, like having to kind of deal with things from the past um i'd say mental health um is when somebody is not managing their mental health properly the way they behave the stresses they're under their behavior patterns which then um become too much for them therefore they are not able to manage themselves properly in society according to societal rules um but yeah there's a lot of stigma um attached to mental health and i think that's because we don't necessarily understand it before i personally went through it um i i would say that um i didn't have um i hadn't really thought about it i didn't really know much about it um until i went through it when i think about mental illness a lot of things come to mind um, but the first thing I think of is when I was a kid and I used to um, see people with mental health on the street and didn't actually know what was wrong with them and as time has gone on I've actually realised that they weren't very well. Everybody has their breaking point but within, 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 within reason you can, you can take the challenges whether it's relationships, whether it's at work, whether it's kind of curveballs that you get with, with family, um, you know that every, every, no, almost like every year of your life there's always something that happens that you weren't you weren't um, forecasting or, or you don't know it's it going to happen, and those and those are times that your your resilience is tested because it's sort of like how how you're going to deal with this. You've never planned for it. It could be financial, it could be physical, it could be emotional. It's how you, it's how it's how you have the capacity to 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 deal with it. So mental health is is I would say is the capacity to deal with the challenges of life, um, and it's always the issue is actually the. That do people understand in the same way? Because quite often is there is that kind of um, mis, 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 misperception of mental health equals mental illness. Okay, like I have to talk about my personal view and not the personal view of the elders. Because if I think about them, I suddenly start to think of, oh, somebody has put some juju on her. Oh, or my boy, her husband left her, or something like that, some crisis like that. Um, but I, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's always, we, we've got names, we, we, we're raised in like a community, aren't we? We're raised, like the village raises everyone. So if you have an issue, an auntie, an uncle, a priest, a grandma, everyone's giving you advice and support. So before you got to the stage where, you know, you're diagnosed with having a mental health issues, you, you've had so many, so much counselling throughout the process that it, your mental health issue would be really, really extreme before you went and got medical help. Yes, most of the root of mental illness, one is genetical, inherited, others is environmental factors. Stress play a major role in mental health. You know, I think it, it built up over time because I was showing signs that um, I had like some sort of something wrong with me like I, I kind of had a mini breakdown before but it just came to a head and I just exploded and all of a sudden um, I found myself in Newham General Mental Health Care basically um, and that was like my first main experience of it. Uh, yeah my um, cousin um, actually suffered from severe depression um, Sometime a while back ago, and um, yeah, it came it came on gradually, and it wasn't it wasn't evident to begin with that she was suffering from it. Um, but um, yeah, it, it had you know had a, an effect on the family, had an effect on myself, on the way I look at mental illness because, like I said before earlier, that like, depression is quite common, and you don't often associate it with being mental illness. But it can that sort of type of depression can lead to several different types of mental illness such as schizophrenia sort of if you want to like quote unquote more serious illnesses um, so yeah it was definitely an eye opener having someone that close suffering from that um, 
but it was it was kind of shocking as well because I never experienced anything like that before in my life. Um, I kind of it was it was it was new to me, you know. All of a sudden, you've got people telling you that this is what you have, and it was like, no, I don't have this because I've never showed signs of having it before. What did they so label they labelled it as bipolar affective disorder straight away. That's what I was showing signs of. For example, um, I would want to, I was really excitable, I had racing thoughts. If I was having, I'm having a decent conversation with you now, where we're listening to each other, but if you had seen me then, I was talking so fast, like 80 mile an hour, 100 mile an hour, so fast, it would have been hard for you to keep up with me. And that's how it kind of manifested. Um, so you have, so, you, so, so there's a need of people around you to also engage, engage, engage with, what, with what's happening and, and point it out to the person and ask them kind of in a, in a compassionate way to say, you know what, I've noticed these changes. Um, it might be advisable to go to go speak to somebody about it, whether it's a GP or, or, or a GP as your as your first point of call. So it was kind of it's kind of interesting to be able to look back at it now and see that. As, like explaining to someone that I actually felt better at that time. Um, back to the main question that you asked me, um, I kind of did have a lot of stress in my life. Yeah, um, getting married, moving in with a partner. My partner, my partner. Um, that was like something new as well. Um, I've had loads of ups and downs, I've had a lot of challenges in life, even from, from a child, I've had a lot of childhood traumas that I myself hadn't really dealt with as, until I got much older um, and I had to learn to deal with them. And one of the things that I didn't get and that was probably just because of my culture, I didn't get the professional help that I needed at that particular time when I was a child. So when I got to a certain age, about 21, 22, that's when I started looking back and reflecting and seeing that, you know, I actually need, you know, need the help. But um, most recently, a colleague of mine died, um, which was very traumatic for me, and I needed to get the professional help to help me to get through that challenge of bereavement, because I think nothing prepares you for bereavement, but I felt at some days in my, you know, my saddest days, if I didn't get that professional help, I probably would have been very depressed and very stressed and I think we can lead on to such things like mental illness. And all of these changes and stuff in my life, that's how I kind of responded to them and um, yeah, that's how I responded to them. Um, and it was really hard having been labelled with bipolar because I didn't understand it. Um, as I said, I'd never seen anything like that before. It was a big deal trying to learn to come to terms with it and accept it, take it on board, deal with it. It was massive. But yeah, I've had loads of challenges, but you get through them through prayer, through talking to people as well. I think as well that's something that in our community we don't like to talk. Um, you know, we say, right, let's just keep it to ourselves and, you know, we just keep it amongst the families. But what I've noticed is that when you share a problem, you realise that you're not alone. You realise that, you know, when um, my family member had a breakdown, for instance, um, we started talking to other family members and other people and they were saying, oh yeah, well, you know, we've been through the same thing, this is how we got through it. And it actually gave us hope and that helped us to move forward. So, you know, it is, I've had lots of ups and downs, but, you know, it's, it's life, but it's how you get through them. Um, postnatal depression is a mental illness. Being bipolar is a mental illness. There's absolutely no shame in suffering from mental illness. The earlier you get help, the better. I think we've moved on in society from the times when we were shunned for having mental illness or problems. Uh, I think society has advanced now. I think we've traveled very far. We live in the Western society. Um, and I think that we should behave as such. I think that um, we should embrace people who have had mental illness because they have a lot of experiences to share. So yeah, today I've had two hospital admissions. Um, first one was for about seven weeks. Um, of my life and then the second one 
was an improvement. Um, that was a hospital admission for four weeks. Um, so it was an improvement on the first time. Um, and that too in itself was a massive experience. Like I can look back at it now and think, you know, wow, like I managed to get through it. But even then, from my own point of view, when I was at my worst and my lowest point, I didn't feel like I was as bad as some of the people that I was in the hospital with okay. um, at that point in time, in, in, in the middle of it. Mm. So it was, again, it was quite interesting that some of my, parts of my normal conscious self maybe seemed to be, I seemed to, I seemed to be able to tap into that at that point. And again, I'm looking back at it now and I just find it quite interesting that I was able to still identify and think that I wasn't as bad as some of the people. Even some of the people that came to visit me, like family in hospital, um, they would say as well, you're not necessarily as bad as some of the people that I was in hospital with. If someone who is not coping well with stress, or someone who is depressed, will tend to be withdrawn, will not socialise as much as they used to, in some ways could become antisocial. But not always. Sometimes it's so well hidden that even family relatives are shocked when someone has committed suicide out of depression. And most of the time the person wasn't depressed for one day or two days or even a week. It's something that has been slowly building. Once again for me, family played a massive part in my recovery because I did always have people coming to visit me, I had people coming to support me, and it was nice. And funnily enough, from what I remember, well, from what I've been told, because I don't actually remember this, I would actually sometimes be quite horrible to family in the midst of being in hospital, yeah? Um, I would kind of, you know, say that they've left me alone, it's their fault, um, I would sort of place a lot of blame on them for what I was going through in the midst of what was going on. Um, but I don't, like looking back now, I don't actually remember any of those times. So that's, that was just one point I wanted to let you know about. Um, but yeah, family was important. And it was quite interesting again, because some of the other people that was in the mental health ward with me at the time, they didn't have anyone coming to visit them. They didn't have anyone coming to support them. Um, and maybe without that, I think if I didn't have that there at that time, I probably think it would have taken longer for me to recover. I, I would say in terms of actually, just like that sort of family collective sort of coming together sort of aspect that's part of our culture can help in, in terms of if, somebody does have a mental illness in terms of just rallying around them and giving them support, that support network, that family network in a, in a sense of the, you know, they're saying that uh, a whole village raises a child, so that, that sense that everybody has a responsibility, everybody has an input in, in the upbringing of someone, so if someone is suffering or is, you know, uh, struggling with something, then that, that sort of, um, that cultural awareness of coming together and helping, you know, is, is quite positive. As a person going through it, if you know yourself, you know that something's not quite right. Once you have that that awareness, it's really about kind of making a, making a decision as to what is the right thing for me to do. Um, and hopefully, you're in a, a lucid state of mind where you actually recognise that actually I'm really really stressed. I'm feeling these symptoms. I'm feeling quite depressed. This is I don't want to do this, these things anymore. I'm quite I'm quite worried about this now. Um, and that's where like either through kind of changing your, your, own, your own attitudes, changing your own behaviour, you kind of um, deal with it yourself or you go and seek uh, support from friends and family um, to, help you, to help you kind of instigate changes that will help you cope better. So. Therapy, talking, um, you play a bit of football still? I do, um, I play football every Monday night, um, I play five a side, um, I get to sort of meet up with some of my old school friends and yeah, football on it in itself again is like another therapy outlet for me because I get to vent my frustrations um, 
and without it, to be honest, I kind of don't know where I'd be. Um, I really do need it. Um, I look forward to it. I love doing it. I love playing football anyway. Um, and it, it's just, it's fantastic. I think exercise is definitely the one thing that definitely helps to relieve stress, whether it's walking, running, going to the gym, you know, definitely exercise. Also, um, I believe in a lot of therapy in terms of, you know, treating yourself to spa days, you know, massages, uh, taking time out for yourself, because I think sometimes in this busy, busy world, we don't take time out for ourselves, and that could be doing what you love best, you know, leisure. My leisure is I love to hang out with my friends, have a laugh, and, and you know, that I, I find quite therapeutic and, and helping to relieve stress. My mum is actually a pastor. Um, obviously, she has prayed for me with regards to my condition, with regards to the effect that it's had on me um, and with regards to my recovery but for me um, personally on the spiritual side of things I don't think I actually know too much about it I'm not putting any minister down but the issue of case is something which is so much becoming an eyesore and the authorities to many of our congregation because one whether somebody stood somewhere and pronounced a, a, a case on mr a or miss uh, mr uh, uh, miss b you know it all comes under a case which cries cries our lord jesus you know delivered us from he delivers us from the power and the tyranny of Satan, which includes all of us. So we don't have to come and say, oh, because, yes, if something is re being repeated, you know, sometimes you see a situation that continues, you look at a generational lie, and you see that it's being repeated constantly. Now, you know that, you know, there's a problem. Deal with it. As a minister, deal with it. Um, yeah. I would say I don't know too much about it and um, I don't actually know if I want to. In my opinion, I feel that sometimes um, it, plays, it plays a big part. For instance, when people have mental illness, they feel that perhaps the church can help, the church can counsel you, but if you have a particular mental health issue, you need the professionals. You can still go to church, you can still go to the synagogue, you can still go to the mosque, you can get community support, but you still need medical support in order to survive. There's absolutely nothing wrong with getting help from religious, the religious sector, but it is absolutely vital to get medical help. The two will help you get better quicker because you have the medical support and you have the community support as well. In as much as they believe the spiritual causes or any other causes apart from for the medical line of say, they should seek treatment from the hospital as well as the other one. Because we know we say literally here that an ambiguous and I'm the one, meaning that if you have so many officials meat in your soup, it doesn't spoil the soup. So if you have a mental health problem, you think it's bigger, you can still go for the hospital's medication and seek your treatment, your prayers and fasting alongside and things will get better. I believe that, you know, the role of the minister is very important in our day-to-day -day, uh, uh, life, you know, because one, when the child is uh, in many marriages, Christian marriages, the minister has to be there. When the child is born, he's there, you know, and then uh, marriage is there, and then death also is there. So we play a very effective, you know, role. And so we got to be able also to be able to uh, provide good service. We got to be able to read around, you know, other than, you know, quickly, easily, you know, mag uh, uh, branding, you know, issues of, mental health as demonic you know 
You go out there in our own country, you find people with a mental health issue will be branded. These are demons, uh, uh, demon possessed, and all them kind of things. It's a health issue, which must be treated as such. You know, and so instead of trying to cast out demons from them, you know, if you can provide, encourage them, and say, hey, look, this issue that we're dealing with, I don't know the. The, the 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 head or tail of this why don't you go and see a doctor and discuss to, with him how you feel in fact every activist of Ghanaians seem to be affected by a reason and they, they misinterpret this cause and uh, they believe seem to be under supernatural model that is something that they can't handle so it is caused by external forces. Ghanaians are very spiritual. So they will see something spiritual in everything. Sometimes some of the mental illnesses do have a spiritual element. There's no doubt about that. So even though we see spiritual things in everything, by sheer circumstance or sometimes it's true. But other times we over spiritualize things. And you know when you over spiritualize things, once you've defined it as a spiritual problem, it means you need to look for spiritual solutions. And spiritual solutions are not guided by any code of ethics. What you believe in will affect how you're going to seek the treatment and how you even comply with the treatment when you are given. So most people believe mental illness is caused by evil spirits and evil gods and it's thereby informed how they go for their treatment. So you could be sent to a camp on the outskirts of the village and go through all sorts of exorcism, weird rituals that could make the problem worse, are unhygienic and could even actually impart worse spirits in you. So you need to have somebody who knows what they are doing to handle the spiritual aspect of these things. And so many of you, so many people, you know, including ministers, they talk about which what is a witch? Have they seen a witch? You know, the issue of witch. You know, many people, will be, you know, because I, personally, I was being, being raised up in Africa. I grew up, you know, with that mentality. Hey, the slight thing is a witch. I don't even know which. What is a witch? You know, my perception of witch is what probably I've come to see here on the earth. But I haven't never really seen witch. But, you know, I grew up with that embedded in my psyche and in my language. And I was determined that I wouldn't like to raise up my children in such an environment. So that when they try something, attempt something, and it doesn't work, you know, every time they, they look back and feel that it's something that, you know. If you try something, it doesn't work, try again. If you try, it doesn't work, try again. Sometimes that may not be your field. You move on and try something else. But going around, blaming other people for your own mishap and misdemeanors is totally unacceptable. And I believe that in our African culture, it must change. It's about time, you know, we read a little bit wider. Yes, it's, oh dear. Okay, the, the belief is there, you know, that you, you know, you've got alternative beliefs where people think, okay, you know, someone might put a curse on her um, for whatever reason. However, um, I wouldn't even say however, but Ghanaians are big on faith, aren't they? Whether they're Muslim or whether they're Christian. So the first thing that they would do, or in my mind, if I was struggling and I was having challenges or if I was borderline depressed, the first thing I would do is immerse myself in prayer because that's what I've been taught to do as a Ghanaian, a young Ghanaian woman. Um, that's what I would instinctively do. I think that's what a Ghanaian family or community would do. They would say, pray, 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 pray. Um, and if things didn't improve, they would still say, pray, 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 until things got the brightest point. Um, but I think because I'm more informed, I've been educated here, uh, we've got a plethora of services, um, and I feel like I'm able to access them, you know, I, I probably access services or tell someone to access the services available. These are the issues, but we must not stigmatize every mental issue, you know, as demonic, you know, background, you know, spiritual problem, you know, it's mental health is like every other disease and it must be treated as such. If it comes and if you have a problem, the first thing is that go and see a doctor. The doctors are trained to be able to diagnose and to provide 
the right medication and counsel. People will tell you they try compression, but it's not really true. And it's only for a short space of time. So, you know, you have, first of all, you have to become sensitive to what causes your stress in your life. And you shouldn't forget that even exciting things, nice things, cause you stress. Even your honeymoon, the marriage, going to the farm fair, winning the lottery, all these things cause you stress, as well as the things like moving house, losing a loved one, not having enough money, being sick, also cause you stress. So a lot of things can cause you stress. You should know what the triggers are. Because now there are a whole lot in the system as well. You could be, it could be pollen, it could be Wi-Fi and radiation, it could be the detergent you are using for your clothes. All these things can also cause stress. Friends, family members, there's always that cool auntie who, who thinks she's young but she ain't young. But you could have that open conversation with her and she'll be like, oh, so long as you do well, I'm happy, you know. My mom was great, you know, she was like, hey, I didn't need to go to university to get a degree in common sense. I always remember that. Uh, so I'd say I definitely turn to friends. Um, for example, my sister, um, she's been really supportive. Um, I speak to her nearly every day and she's always sort of um, keen to find out how I'm doing. And for her, um, and for my mum kind of thing as well, my sister and my mum, I don't feel like there's been much talk about it being connected to something spiritual that's happened um, or something that was done against me spiritually. But um, I kind of, yeah, I, me myself as well, I don't really, I don't really take on the spiritual side of it. Um, I just think it was, ju it's just one of them things, it's unfortunate, I had to go through it, it has made me stronger. Um, and hopefully I can just continue to recover and sort of be mentally well and mentally stable as, as I have been. And I just want to build on it every day. Yeah. Uh, in terms of mental health issues, I know there's some great charities out there. Minds comes to mind. Um, and also the, because I work with adolescents, CAMS, children and mental health, uh, I can't even remember it, children and adult mental health services. And they offer support. And there's also lots of local charities. I know the Brent Centre for Young People helps young people. But I would definitely recommend other Ghanaians like myself who, you know, are slightly older but were born here, you know, have parents who were born in Ghana, definitely give up the time and mentor a young person from the Ghanaian community so that they, they, can, they can relate to someone who's kind of been through similar things to them. And it's always good to have that sounding board because as, as much as I'm liberal, I've still got the good traditional Ghanaian values and I, I would love to see that. Know, emulated and other young, young Ghanaians raised in that way so I would definitely say that mentoring, receive mentoring, give mentoring, let's, let's, let's stick together. Um, I'm not familiar with resources in Ghana, um, I know it's like a, a, a fledgling kind of counselling community um, but I don't know any particular organisation per se but in the UK um, there isn't necessarily I say, a Ghanaian resource or, or, or process but there is a very good um, organisation called the Black and Asian Therapy Network and um, it's an organisation designed to promote um, counselling psychotherapy within the Black and Asian community um, in terms of as a profession as well as, 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 as a resource for people to tap into to help them go through stuff. So they have a directory and they also have um, a list of resource, list of organisations that provide free and or low cost counselling so and also they have a directory of, of black and Asian therapists around around London and the UK. So um, if you if you want somebody you feel that it, it will, will best suit you from a from a black from a black perspective, that's a good starting point to go to. And they also explain um, counselling and therapy in terms of the process, in terms of the different theories, in terms of um, the, the, the different approaches. And also it's a resource if you want to kind of become a counsellor or psychotherapist they'll, they'll give you advice on that as well um, and they've done a number of um, programs and um, initiatives as well particularly one called black men on the couch uh, which was a very interesting series which was 
kind of wanting to engage black males on, on, on talking more about issues and problems. It's not the end of the world. Um, it's a very, very hard thing to deal with, um, especially whilst you're going through it. Um, yeah, try and access all the help that they offer to you because they're professionals, they kind of know how to deal with it um, and that's a, that's a good thing, do you get what I mean? All the help that they're offering you is a good thing um, and yeah, at least try something once, give it a go, um, don't close your mind to it, um, don't think it would be of no help because you don't know until you try it, you don't know until you do it. So yeah, just be open to it. Um, and, and, and hopefully you'll get through it, stay strong, keep your head up, um, it will make you stronger. And yeah, that's, that's, that's the advice I would give.